Hey guys, it's Breck Bassinger, but you may recognize my voice as Stargirl from CW Stargirl. And as Stargirl, I always listen to Stargirl After Show. It's so much fun getting to listen to all of my different castmates' interviews, hear about DC lore, and of course, all the Stargirl history. So make sure you go listen to Stargirl After Show. And yes, I know I just said Stargirl like 50 times, <laughs> but seriously, go listen to it. Without the involvement of John Hughes or National Lampoons, a fourth vacation movie was greenlit in 1996, with Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, and Randy Quaid all returning. However, this time around, Audrey is played by Marisol Nichols, and Rusty is played by Ethan Embry, star of such films as Can't Hardly Wait and That Thing You Do. With most of the movie taking place in Las Vegas, many of the staples of the city of that time appear in the film, including Siegfried and Roy, the Hoover Dam, and of course, Wayne Newton. Releasing on February 14, 1997, Vegas Vacation was initially panned by critics, but has since acquired more of a nostalgic following from fans. But what did we think of this movie? Get ready to purchase your fake IDs off some guy on the street and make sure you know where to buy some damn bait, because we watched the fourth film in the Vacation franchise of films, Stephen Kessler's 1997 comedy classic, Vegas Vacation. This is a show about franchises. Comedy movie franchises. You're listening to License to Watch. Why in the world was this movie made? singing along yeah he is i'm picking up good vibrations she's giving me he just keeps on saying good vibrations he doesn't know any of the words he's driving over everything you know what i will say not i don't want to get off on too negative of a note i hate this opening of this movie i think that it's i didn't like the cartoon opening of christmas vacation I liked like the postcards and the passports of the first two. I thought those were great openings. Yes. And then they did the Christmas cartoon of Santa Claus, which I thought was dumb, very of the period. And then we got this where he's basically just driving all over the place, running over the streets, recklessly endangering lives and singing along to the Beach Boys. And um, I don't know, not feeling it. I do love that Beach Boys song, though. Uh, it, I should a good note, song. it is the exact same house from Christmas Vacation. It looks a little different. They've done some remodeling. But look, see the window up there? Oh, yeah. The neighbor's house? Yeah, it's more like the neighbor's house looks more traditional than it did in the other one. But, yeah. It's oh. the same house. Um, but anyway, uh, going off what Harris just said, um, I'm glad you bring that up because, like, one of the interesting things for me about, like, looking at, a mo- uh, like, a franchise of movies is consistency, you know, and it's like, okay, so this is an example of a film franchise that, like, didn't stay consistent with a lot of things. Case in point, these two who just walked in. Although they stayed consistent with replacing the kids. I think that became a bit, and they even... They they acknowledge it in this this movie, yeah. Which I like. Um, But, uh, yeah, the openings are different. The first two movies kind of have a similar opening. They play the same song, and they have, like, a slideshow sort of thing. Yeah. And then they change it up for Christmas, and they change it up for this... And, like, you know, if this opened with an animated thing, then you could say, like, okay, the first two are that and the second two are that. But, you know, they, they change it up. So, it yeah, it just feels, like, disjointed. Right. And this one's not National Lampoon's. Uh, well, that's just a name. I guess. I um, yeah, I mean, I, I had a, I sort of have a similar complaint with Christmas Vacation not being a trip. Like, these are kind of trip movies. The first one's a road trip. The second one's a road trip. Then Christmas Vacation is they stay at home, which I, I'm kind of like, yeah. that's kind of lame. I this one, This one gets them out of their house again, which I think is great. Still not really a road trip, but it's kind of a road trip. Like, they definitely have road trip elements. They really milk the 
Las Vegasness. Yeah, at, like they get all the things that at it, the time Las Vegas is. Uh, it feels a little for. like European vacation where they're seeing the sights and doing different stuff in different areas. Uh, I I do love the timeliness. This is during a period of time where Vegas tried to rebrand itself as being family friendly. Yeah, and they they were right in the right spot time wise. Yep. Um, and they also, one thing that they do is they, you know, no cousin Eddie in European vacation, but he's been kind of a traditional thing that's been in these movies. We've talked about Clark doing superhuman stuff. That's back in this movie yes. when he climbs the Hoover Dam. My, uh, probably my least favorite part of this. this <laughs> film yeah, we'll get to that. It's definitely my least favorite thing too. And I can, I have a favorite part. I okay. hope you guys have a favorite part too. I feel what like favorite the Hoover part Dam. of this movie, everything but the beginning in the Hoover Dam, I think is my favorite part of this yeah. movie. Uh, the Hoover Dam thing is uh, just like, I feel like that's Chevy being Chevy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to not like any part of this perfect film. And that's why it pains me to say that I don't like the Hoover Dam part, but everything else is perfect. There is, there's a couple things in the Hoover Dam scene oh, that yeah. I like. The, yeah, the dam tour. To use the, yeah, the, the dam tour guide. The dam and, tour guide is great. And him trying to use the bubble gum to patch the yep. leak he caused is yeah, pretty that's, funny. Yeah, that's good too. Um, all right, well, before we go any further, we should say that the movie we are talking about is, our a, guest. is a little movie called Vegas Vacation. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're, let's introduce our guest. Uh, so she's, uh, she's from, where is she from? Hello, I'm from... Somewhere else. My name is, <laughs> my name is Eunice Schmorgesborg. Ah, Eunice I'm a lovely woman who talks like this and is for sure a real person. <laughs> and Eunice Schmorgesborg. Real person, <laughs> real woman. <laughs> Now, Ms. Ms. Schmorgesbord, uh, people have said of you that uh, you're you're much like a Mrs. Doubtfire character, where you're actually a man dressed in women's clothing. But I mean, that's just that's just you know evil rumors. Like I don't you know or I conjecture. I, I don't know if anybody's <laughs> checked. That's all wrong. <laughs> I'm definitely a person, and I'm here podcasting tonight, talking about a lovely film. Known as Vegas Vacation. I mean, you're here. You're in the room with us. I'm looking at you. You are a you're stunning woman. In no yes, way made up. Yeah, I I'm stunning. I'm very hot. <laughs> and wh- I love watching Chevrol chase movies. <laughs> Chevrol? He called by its proper name. That's very, very <laughs> formal of you. Chevrol chase. <laughs> it's very formal of you, Miss <laughs> Schmorgasbord. <laughs> I have to say that you're, you're, you're tall and you have luxurious long hair. You have a huge a heaving th- bosom, handsome mustache. <laughs> yes, they've always said I'm quite beautiful. I've seen far too many little boys trying to cover their boners. <laughs> <laughs> like that one right there. Oh, very good. Um, all right. Well, the Schmorgus board, um, if you could just send Colin back in. Uh, wow. <laughs> That is one hot woman. Yeah. Let me tell you, I had to cover my phone. <laughs> she'll be back. Something yeah. tells me she'll be back. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> yeah, n- nice job, Colin. I'm glad you were able to find us such an accomplished guest on such short notice. Yeah, so knowledgeable. Um, In her field. Anyway, getting back to this movie... But I mean, let's can we just summarize the plot? Because I feel like I want to jump around. There's things I want to talk about already. Okay, let's summarize the plot. Um, somebody put two minutes on their mental clock. I'm not even going to need two minutes. Uh, okay, stopwatch starts now. Okay, Chevy Chase got a big bonus at work for creating cookies and milk that can last for decades. And um, he decides to take the family to Vegas. And they're like, none of them are excited about it because the kids are underage and uh, Ellen isn't into it, and but Chevy Chase wants to go to Vegas, and he says it's for families. So they get on a plane, and they try to join the Mile High Club, and it doesn't go well. Then they get to Vegas, and he almost kills Audrey in a sunroof, and then they get to their hotel, and Chevy Chase starts gambling, and, or I should say Clark Griswold starts gambling, and he's terrible at it, and he's losing tons of money, but he gets like hooked on it, addicted. And, um, and it turns out that Cousin Eddie is here in Vegas, and he lives here, and he's going to be a big part of this movie. So the family goes on some adventures. They see some shows. Different things happen. And eventually, um, uh, Clark is so obsessed with gambling that he decides they should all go off and do their own thing. And some of the things that happen are that Wayne Newton has fallen in love with Ellen because he saw her in the lobby of a hotel. And he sends him tickets to the show. 
and he's like sort of hitting on her. And meanwhile, uh, cousin Vicky, uh, uh, Eddie's kid, is going to take Audrey out for a night in the town because she's too like buttoned up and she's going to teach her how to loosen up. Meanwhile, Rusty can't do anything fun because he's underage. So Rusty gets a fake ID and Audrey starts dancing at a club with cousin Vicky and hanging out with some entertainers. And Ellen decides to go hang out with Wayne Newton because she's got a huge crush on him. And Clark is losing even more money and he loses all their money and he feels like a failure. And then he can't get his family back because they are so mad at him. Uh, for ditching them and cousin Eddie decides to help him get his money back by going to some casino where they play like guess which hand it's in and eventually he realizes that he's not upset about losing his money he's upset about losing his family so he goes and he finds them all and he gets them back he hijacks a van and he gets them back and then they decide to play um pachinko or whatever the fuck the thing is and they don't win but the guy sitting next to him does and then he dies and he gives him all the money and then Rusty won a bunch of cars too and I missed all the Nick Papa Giorgio stuff but that's the movie they could drive home I mean, I can't Gina. believe how much Nick Papa Giorgio I missed, which is ten, really one of the best things about the ten movie. Ten seconds over. I'm sure we'll talk about uh, Mr. Papa Giorgio. Yes. Uh, ten seconds over. That's pretty good. Like, Yeah, but I mean, I, you, I'm you, kicking you, myself for the Rusty stuff. Yeah. Definitely missed a lot of Nick Papa Giorgio. But well, anyways. Speaking of Rusty, why don't we jump right into our new uh, Rusty and Audrey in this movie? We've seen them kind of recently. Yep. Yep, uh, yep. yep. Both of them. Yep. They were both in Can't Hardly Wait. Uh, what's his name? Ethan Embry in a much larger role, and the girl, her name is Marisol something. Um, I forget her last name. No, no, I think it's something. I don't know if it's pronounced that way, but but uh, she written. she has a tiny part in Can't Hardly Wait. But uh, you know, I was looking her up. I think in our Can't Hardly Wait episode on Patreon for just one dollar a month at www.patreon.com slash l two w. Um. Uh, we talked about that she didn't really have a career after this movie, despite but being a total smoke show. She yes, is very, very, very sexy. Um, turns out she has a massive career in television. She's in. She's been working nonstop, like pretty much since this. She was on Twenty Four. She was on she, like one of the NCIS or like one of those kind of shows. Oh, That's sure. why she was we've... on Twenty Four different shows. <laughs> <laughs> More, I think. <laughs> well, it's good. Good for her. Uh, yeah, and most recently she was in a movie called Spiral, which is like the Chris Rock uh, Jigsaw Saw spinoff oh, okay. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Oh. I'm glad to see she landed on her feet. By the way, I'm going to say this, probably controversial. I love Anthony Michael Hall. I love uh, Dana, who was the one from Barron? the first one? Dana Barron. Was she the one from the first one? Yeah. Dana yeah. Barrett is Sigourney Weaver's name in Ghostbusters. Dana Barron. Um, I, I think they are great, Rusty and Audrey. These are the best Rusty. This is the best Rusty and Audrey. This is my favorite Rusty and Audrey. Really? Yep. They're the most well-written. Yeah. they're well, the most. Rusty and Audrey in Christmas Vacation did nothing they're the most their own characters i love these actors i think it's great i think they're distinct characters they've got good plot lines and i mean audrey doesn't have as good a one but that's sort of a recurring problem with this but i like the actors i like the characters i think they're really good in this you know what i think happened is in european vacation they went too far they they relied on the actors uh you know abilities too much and they didn't they didn't totally come through uh, because they were like they 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 wrote them into the story, but they didn't give them good writing in each scene. So yeah. they were like, "Okay, you guys figure it out," and that didn't kind of work out. And then they went backwards; they de-aged them, made them too young, and gave them nothing to do in a big ensemble in, in, Christmas in, thing, yeah, in the Christmas one. And now we're back to needing them to be characters again. And it's so perfect that they go to Vegas and they're on the cusp of adulthood, yeah, because uh, that's just. The that worst time the to go to Vegas. Worse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the, you know, that's that's what I think. This reminds me so much of the first vacation movie in that it is about like all four of them kind of have their own thing that they're doing um, where we really haven't seen. We sort of saw it in European vacation, but it wasn't well executed. This is the first time since the first movie where all four of the Griswolds kind of have their own thing. Yes. I agree. Yeah, I like in, in the scene where they're like, okay, you kids go have fun, and they just look at each other, and they're like, see you later, and they both like <laughs> yeah. go off and do their own thing. Um, yeah, it's very realistic. I feel like at that age, yeah. you would not want to hang with your sister. Or oh, they, I think they do. A, the The dynamic between them feels very real, brother and sister. They don't look very alike. No. Right, right. But they definitely behave like brothers and sister. I yeah. love this part where he says, like, when they were little kids, he could just have fun with them and roll them across the bed. And, <laughs> and Rusty's and he like, you want to roll us on the bed? <laughs> yeah. He's, he tries to take him out to a show, and Rusty's like, can't you just roll me on the bed again? <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, but Siegfried and Roy, this was a great show. <laughs> I can't say enough. I So uh, I went to Vegas the first time when I was 13 because I was uh, caught up in the propaganda that, you know, it was a, a family vacation place now, and I... I begged and pleaded, can can I see Vegas while I'm like 13 or 14? I which, definitely want to see it now before I can do anything there, please. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, which was not that bad, but I, I got to see Siegfried and Roy, and it was like, I think the same year this was made, so I saw pretty much the exact show that they're, you know, reenacting for this, yep. and it was a really good show. I don't know. Nobody was mauled by a tiger in that one. Nobody was mauled by, but like that's pretty good for a Siegfried and Roy show. That's put, always the mark of a good Siegfried and Roy show. Nobody was almost murdered by a tiger. They put so many tigers on that stage that like there's like an energy in the room. Like oh shit, is like is like eight people gonna get eaten tonight or yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if these tigers realize that they have yeah. the upper hand, it could all go bad really quick. Because you can't see in the in this movie, you can see that like those tigers when they. They lift the big like asteroid with tigers in the craters thing mm-hmm. out of the ground. It, when you when you're in the live show, it's really hard to see like the harnesses they have on the tigers. It looks like they're just in there and they're just cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're just chilling. Yeah, and it's like oh, like nobody piss these things off, please. <laughs> um, we also besides Siegfried and Roy, we also just saw our first um, appearance of celebrity cameo Wayne Newton playing himself, which I believe maybe this could be hyperbole, but I believe that may be the best person playing themselves in any movie ever. <laughs> wow. I love Wayne Newton as himself in this. It is hilarious. I love that it he's is a spaghetti perfect. aficionado. Yeah, exactly. Like he's just <laughs> making huge bowls of pasta. I love that he shows up to the door in his American flag kimono with a headband. He's like, uh, as a singer, my body's my temple. <laughs> and I, and my body's my instrument. I have to keep it in perfect condition. And it's so funny that he's like, he takes himself so seriously and it's amazing that he had the sense of humor to do a spoof where he plays a guy with no sense of humor about himself. It's so good. So good. So good. It's really excellent. Oh, you know what one of my favorite things is? He gives her a dress that says Waniac on mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. That dress is so funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I like everything about the Wayne Newton character, the relationship he has with Ellen. I like how she like eventually realizes, like when he gives her a lock of his own hair, <laughs> even she is like, oh man, maybe this isn't what I want. <laughs> it's so good. You know what I, I notice? Um, when Cousin Eddie shows up, he's wearing an Africa gold chain. For some <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and he's got the, uh, we used to call it, uh, we used to call it uh, Cousin Eddie style when you were, when you would loop the uh, six pack plastic rings into your belt loop <laughs> yeah. and walk around a party with like the remainder of the six pack hanging from the plastic rings in your belt oh loop. My he God. has it in every scene. <laughs> it's this, amazing. Sure. It's amazing. This is the thing where like, it's, you know, it's sad that Randy Quaid lost his mind and doesn't work anymore or whatever but like this is like the high point of a pretty a pretty impressive career and this movie he is perfect he is so good at this like this character has kind of come from like this scuzz bag who makes out with his daughter in the first movie to you see him pop up in christmas vacation as like this kind of clueless you know dope who's just like the total slob and then in this movie, it's like, it actually is kind of a well-formed character and it is funnier than it is. And he's funnier doing this than he is in any of the other. And he's, he's still slimy. Yeah. Um, and like <laughs> this gag where he talks about, he had just said that like they replaced the plate in his head. So every time he belches, he passes out for half an hour. And then immediately <laughs> Clark says, I can't believe I just lost $300 in 15 minutes. And he like chokes in his beer, belches and falls to the ground. It's so good. The best line in that is like, Oh, you show him who's boss, uh, Clark. It's it's people like you that blow the family nest egg that built this town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little foreshadowing among other things. <laughs> uh, so good. Um, yeah, but I I think I I think I said it last time. I I like this cousin Eddie the best. I feel like this is like, uh, you know the 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 part about him that's the most like evil besides like the incestuous nature (laughs) is that he's like such a leech, you know? And in this one, the fact that he's willing to, to let Clark throw his money away without being 
like like he wants jealous. the money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, totally generous cousin Eddie. Instead of trying to mooch and just get everything he can, right. he basically is like, "Hey, I, I owe you. Take everything I got." You know? Yeah, and is like cool with it. Yeah, yeah. It's a kind of interesting turn. I disagree with you guys. I think Cousin Eddie and Christmas Vacation is my favorite. Um, maybe because I'm not as familiar with this movie as you guys are, but like even watching it today, um, I don't know. I, I have issues with with him in this. And they even I hate one of the things I I, I hate is that uh, at the end when they're getting married and the wife is crying hysterically. They're both crying hysterically, but the wife says, "I love you, Eddie, even though you've ruined my life." <laughs> I hate that she calls that out. I don't like that. I want her to like be happy with him. Oh, I love it. No, I love it. It's so good. <laughs> oh, no, I mean Vegas, I mean Christmas Vacation is also a very good cousin Eddie. Um, but this is this is easily my favorite Can because you i tell it's my thumb roy <laughs> <laughs> i do think it is because this cousin eddie has a heart yeah, yeah i I, uh, I also i don't like the introduction of cousin eddie in this he just kind of shows up he's there like how how did he know where they were um, you're imposing logic on a movie there's a lot of logic, no logic problems yeah. in this i have another big one later on um I think his introduction in Christmas Vacation it was done so well that like coming into this is just oh like, yeah oh we need yeah. him in the script now so let's just you're a hundred percent can't <laughs> disagree with you at all on that you're totally right. Um, by the way, we just saw the first blackjack scene with Mr. Wallace Shawn, um, better known for uh, Princess Bride. He's so good in this. My it's dinner with Andre, Clueless. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's inconceivably good in this movie, <laughs> um, playing the blackjack dealer, the he evil plays blackjack a dealer. A blackjack dealer named Marty, which is yep. apparently a throwback or a call out to uh, Marty Moose, which is the uh, oh, yeah. Wally World thing. Um, I think it's a bit of a stretch. There, but, but the blackjack character that taunts you and is like antagonistic is hilarious because blackjack ta- blackjack dealers do not do that. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly the opposite. I once lost $200 at a blackjack table in under a half an hour. Like, and it was like a, it was like a five and $10 table. Um, and, and it was like a series of the worst possible, like, the blackjack dealer apologized to me and said, listen, yeah, I don't want you to think this is you. You're, and of course this is what they'd say regardless. Cause they're like, keep on playing. You're not doing anything wrong. But she was like, listen, I've seen some people have some bad luck. This is a humdinger of a bad run. You've been on. This is not your fault. Don't feel bad. This is just, you're just getting, but it was exactly like this. Like I'd get a 20, she'd get a blackjack. And it, every time, um, but they're, they're trained to like celebrate you winning because that actually like, you know, gives you the feeling yeah. that you come back for. Also, I did not tip her, and I apologize for not tipping her, but I was literally out of money. So, like, they <laughs> yeah. they like you to, they want you to win. It's not their money. Oh, they they definitely want you to win because yeah. the, you know, their salary is not as good as the tips that they're getting. Exactly, get. and I would have loved to have won huge and tipped her great. It did yeah. not, it was not in the cards for either of us that night. Um, I, I saw this movie one time in the movie theater, and that is it until today. And, uh, shocking. The part when he, so so Clark gets pulled up on stage for the Siegfried and Roy show, and they put him in a box and they cover it, and then when, when they reveal it, it's a white uh, tiger, and the whole gag is that you know like the whole show continues on, and his family's looking around like yes you know like where is he? I thought it would have been great if he came back and was like. I was a tiger. Like I would actually like magic is real. <laughs> like, that's what, that, that is what happened. I mean, he's just like afraid to like, he's afraid to say it. Cause he like, doesn't know how to explain it. I do I th- like that his hair is all messed yeah, up. That's, yeah. I, w- I was going to say, they really sell the gag of him rising up out of the floor of the tigers because it's kind of unexpected. You're watching the show and you're like, how are they going to reintroduce him? And then he just pops up in the place of a tiger on all fours like he's a tiger and his hair is a mess. And it's it was, you know, it got a chuckle out of me. Either that or they should have continually cut back to him like sitting in like a tiny like room somewhere. No, and he turned like into a, hole a tiger in the wall, and he's like looking through and watching the show. I don't know. I like it. I like it unexplained. But as we've established, Colin and I have seen this movie many times and can find no flaws. In it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know, guys. Oh, so what? good, Matt. That's not what you said. earlier. You said that you threw away all your DVDs and Blu-rays, and, you had, and <laughs> I your only wife had to get you Vegas to bring them vacation. back in the house because once you saw Vegas Vacation, you tried to throw away all other like movies. all other movies are dead to me. <laughs> We also uh, have Chrissy Brinkley coming back. I do not like this bit. Not funny. What are you talking about, man? You just said you the wanted joke, to like... The joke is that she has a baby. Yeah, it's and not he funny. hates babies. Yeah, exactly. Like, And it's just and it's ruined her body. 
<laughs> what? That's not the joke. She looks amazing. She looks exactly <laughs> the same. Colin, you yeah. don't know anything about babies. <laughs> I, I guess I don't. <laughs> yeah, she looks exactly the same as she did like however many, like what, 15, 20 years before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um no this is this is part of like this is kind of a little bit of fan servicey stuff to yeah. sort of call back to the original i think it's great that they found a way to get this in here it's not like the funniest gag but um it's fan service yeah it is definitely fan servicey and and i think the joke isn't that she's got a baby so now she, he's not into her it's like the joke is that like even she has moved on and is doing different things with her life and he's gotta like grow up a little bit and I like that she shrugs like, yeah, I got a baby. So not into you anymore, yeah. even though you own that prosperous hotel chain. Uh, yeah. Okay, so they're on their way now to what? The Hoover Dam? Is Hoover that the Dam. next bit? Yeah. Um, yes. The Hoover Dam. Yeah, I remember this was in the trailer. I remember like... When oh, no, they're visiting Cousin Oh, yeah, they got to go Sorry. get Cousin Eddie first. Because that's right, because oh, yeah. they aren't going to bring Cousin Eddie to the Hoover Dam can but you believe gets- they used to test H bombs on this beautiful piece of property? I didn't notice before that they just showed like the little bunker. It's like yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, like cousin Eddie wardrobe is just always just killing it. It's like it, this is like <laughs> I I want to say that if I I don't know how to put this, but cousin Eddie is like Colin's wardrobe dialed up to an eleven. <laughs> it's like just like a little bit, just like a click more. <laughs> Uh, there's definitely some crossover here. Tell me, Colin, tell me you have never thought about wearing a mesh mauve tank top or whatever. I, I, I'm pretty much on record as saying like, I have many times thought about switching my shirts to all mesh tank tops, <laughs> yep. but I've never been able to really pull the trigger on that. I love this bit with his son, uh, with the, the piercings in his face and the greasy, like, hair <laughs> yeah the whole the whole visit to cousin eddie's is amazing cooking the chicken on the he just throws yeah. he's like hey yeah, you need yeah. any help with a grill ah no don't have a grill <laughs> just let him uh, what is he i can't even remember what he says but he just throws him onto a hot rock yeah oh, that's man. pretty funny because it's probably real <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in las vegas and of course uh <laughs> rusty gets <laughs> sick from eating the chicken yeah well it's probably irradiated yeah He's, what does he say uh, later? You know, if you're still hungry, I could wrestle a potato salad away from the dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this gag, too, that uh, Ellen's helping her cousin out in the kitchen, and it's the kitchen in their trailer, which is, like, not even big enough for the two of them. Like, just the physical comedy of the two of them trying to stand in this space um, is pretty funny. So this is the only movie, um, or I shouldn't say the only movie, because European Vacation wasn't written by uh, John Hughes either. But this, uh, John Hughes is not credited at all on this one, even though he was credited on European Vacation. That was because he actually, they used some bits that he had written for, for Vegas, for, for uh, Vacation in European Vacation, yeah. Yeah. So this one he had absolutely nothing to do with. And the person who wrote this, um, I didn't look into it, but I had never heard of her before. It's a uh, one woman, I think. Um, one brilliant woman. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it brings everything together. It, it, it's It's got fan service it has uh each character has uh, like their own moments and scenes i don't know and i think the end of like we talked a little bit in christmas vacation about the uh, jpms this has a very high jpm count and i think it's you know i think christmas vacation had a lot of them too but this one definitely is there's like a it, they you never get very far without them throwing a gag out there they don't all work but you know they never do um, one but, big detractor for me is that this movie's rated PG. So like a lot of the jokes, like I think what I like about Christmas Vacation is like a lot of the jokes are edgy and like kind of like sharp tongued and like, you know, it's like a lot of uh, Chevy Chase's like, you know, quick wit like mm. and his like little comebacks and stuff. And in this movie, it's like kind of toned down very much so because I mean, it's PG. It's not even PG 13. You know, I never even noticed that before, but yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, yeah, it is very, it is kind of a family friendly movie. Oh, I love this when he's talking about showing the little, showing the little move I taught you pork chop that his daughter's a stripper. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like, I love that. Like they take the time to, before we even see the daughter, that's a stripper, we've already seen cabs and buses with her picture on them. When they pull into Vegas, she is like the spokesmodel for the strip club. 
on all the buses. Right, yeah. right but it was, it was blurred out. Like you didn't, you don't realize that it's her. In the but you, you right? can see. No, you definitely. There's see an advertisement yeah. when on on the top of a cab that says Club Areola, and it, they yeah. use it as a wipe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, but and it's and like very, so close that you, you can't tell. No, you it's definitely her. clearly see her if yeah. you know, if you know that what she looks like. You know that it's her. Same way, like if well, you, once you've seen the movie once, then you know that it's yeah, her. Yeah, sure. It's like how first time the first time they go into the casino, Wallace Shawn is dealing blackjack at a table, and it actually pans past him, which. You wouldn't notice, except that you know, unless you knew that he was going to be an important yeah, character you, you later. You notice it. You 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 notice that this is the same person you already saw. Right. Uh, I read in the trivia that um, it said in that limo ride in the beginning, it like kind of sets up a lot of things for the rest of the movie. One of which is what we're talking about this the stripper um, picture, and then you know you see Wayne Newton, and she looks out at him, and she says like, Wayne "Oh yeah, Newton. yep." And then there's something an advertisement I think that Rusty looks at, and it's like. Four cars have been won already. Like the next one could be yours. Oh, that's yeah. a, that's a good uh, foreshadowing. Thing. Yeah, it's like um, what is it? Shaun of the Dead. That basically, <laughs> yeah, I like love he, that. He, at the beginning of the movie, he says everything that will happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, this is probably the way the Hoover Dam situation ends is not great, but I like the gags leading up to it, um, and I like that, like cousin Eddie's. Uh, you know, we'd love to invite you, cousin Eddie, but uh, you know, you gotta watch the kids. Oh, no problem. I'll get the babysitter, and he just lets a bunch of snakes loose, and he's like, "Kids, <laughs> round up." That'll keep him busy. I uh, we're I've been get to some the damn Hoover, bait. Yeah, I've been to the Hoover Dam, but I've never done the tour. And um, there was one time I went, and I wanted to do the tour, but I was convinced that because I had seen Transformers, that I should the entire time try to convince the tour guide that I was there to free Megatron. Um, <laughs> I have that never, never happened. I've never done. Where is the, can you point me in the direction of the all spark? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never done the tour because I'm afraid that the guy won't interest in, introduce himself as your damn tour guide already. Yeah. And say, if you got any damn questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I feel like that guy is the real tour guide though. Like I, I didn't look it up, but he seems like authentic. One of my biggest pet peeves for movies of any kind is when, or I guess in, for comedies specifically, is like when they have the jokes or like some of the best jokes in the trailer. And then when you go to the theater and those jokes happen and like people laugh hysterically, I hate that so much because it's like, we all watched the trailer. We're all here for the same reason. Like you saw this joke already. It's not that funny. And that damn uh, tour guide bit was definitely in the trailer. And that's always what I think of when I saw this in the theater. I remember people like laughing at that. And I was like, you're all fools. I've seen this. I know what's <laughs> I happening. I know that here. joke already. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed at that joke weeks ago. Idiots. <laughs> Idiots. Um, I don't know. I don't remember that. I, I remember that getting a big laugh in the theater. I think I probably laughed at it. I uh, I also probably didn't watch the trailer for this. So, yeah, I like this bit here. Yeah, where he puts the gum on the bubble. that's <laughs> <laughs> And then it's gone. Yeah. yeah. And then he just basically, I like how he like is pressing his like, body up against it and just getting totally soaked on with, with damn leakage. Um, and, and it pays off later in like the yep. next scene, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this whole bit uh, is stupid. Yeah. It's exhausting. It's like the wacky, it's the wacky Clark Griswold doing something almost superhumanly, uh, incredible. I mean, some of this is like him wandering around the Hoover dam and not, and having lost a tour, not knowing where he's going and almost falling. Like, I can get all this, but it's when he decides, like, he finds himself in a weird place, and he wants to get up to the top of the dam again, and he decides the best way to do it is to climb a, like, a power... Yeah, a grid uh, or, like... Power line, uh, yeah. whatever, the, the power line stanchion or whatever it's called, and then, like, climb across it like it's, like, some kind of hand-over-hand -hand rope bridge thing, and then he falls, and then, like, the spatial geography of him swinging to the dam and then climbing up based on what he's seeing and when the family sees him and what it looks like when he swings, none of it makes any sense. Like it's so playing fast and loose with like reality. It really took me, it, it's always taken me out of the movie. It's always been my least favorite thing. A black mark on this entire otherwise perfect, perfect film. Yeah. I mean, I get that they had to do, this is like totally a it's trailer. All physical. Moment. They have to it's, just have that moment. It's also the hiking through the desert and um, I can't remember what some of the other ones were, but it's, you know, like there's always this Clark Griswold feats of, you know, whatever. Yeah. The the wacky uh, 
saucer ride in Christmas Vacation, which was my least favorite part of that movie. Yeah. What saucer ride? The sledding. Goes oh, the oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, what does he do in European Vacation? Anything? I don't remember. Does Oh, well, I it guess like something. the car chase. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, chase. at the end, their airplane hits the Statue of Liberty. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. kind of goofy. Uh. This, yeah, this is stupid. Yeah, it's just. But it's, I do. I'm surprised Colin isn't defending this, but this is how this is how stupid this is. Even Colin is like, yeah, I this, wanna, is, this is tough to defend. I'm looking for something. Yeah, and don't like, they even make the, the Tarzan the, noise when he's like, yeah, swing, yeah. Even okay. the VFX are kind of terrible here. Like, oh, you know, VFX even for the time period, it's not very good. The the one VFX that that was good is when he opens that first door and yeah. he's like and opened the a door out. to the middle of the dam somehow. Yeah, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that he starts singing like and the rockets or whatever he's singing. Yeah. Oh no. Beautiful. Oh beautiful. Yeah. It's very yeah. cartoony. It's yeah, like it is. Looney, it's we're like, watching Looney Tunes. Oh right? yeah. This is he's oh, Wiley that, it, it, it looks sure. just like a Wile E. Coyote gag. And, but this is also stupid. Like he swung into the middle of the dam they wave at him from another part of the dam. That's clearly and, not him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so clear. It's, That's not him. That's him. But yeah, it's insanely stupid. And then he climbs, he just climbs up this thing. It's, it, I think one of the funniest parts of this whole scene is not a line and not a character really doing anything except that cousin Eddie is holding a fishing pole the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because he believes that there is good fishing somewhere at the Hoover Dam. Well, he did want the dam bait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, also they make a joke later on as he and his wife are leaving that, you know, the tour gets better every weekend and he, yes. and, he and he complains about the fishing isn't very good or something like that. Yes. So, clearly this he goes is something there every week. Yes, yeah, this is something they they do pretty consistently. <laughs> I love this. This is a classic Chevy Chase gag yep. of of him trying to drink out of the straw while he's ogling some uh, women in bathing suits at the pool and he almost jams it up his nose and then like tries to like grab it with his tongue. It's like a way that he can make even something as stupid as drinking out of a straw or as simple as drinking out of a straw into like a physical comedy bit, which is really like one of his gifts as a comedian. You don't get it nearly enough, but it's something, and, and sometimes he tries to do it way too much with everything, but this is a movie that has moments like that that I think are really funny, like small moments. Fragrant garden of beautiful flowers. I love a good pervy dad bit. Oh, yeah. 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 And mulch. His shirt is oh, boy. really, really good in this. But I also like that this reminds me of my own sex talk with my dad at a, a slightly younger age, not that much younger, where he was like giving me the, the talk. And I was like, oh, is this the sex thing? And then it was just like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, can't, I don't. I yeah, actually I I think, have three illegitimate children. It, it, yeah. No, I think his thing was like, he started giving me the sex talk. It got awkward. And then he was like, you know what? Like, I learned it from my friends. You should probably just ask your friends. And I was like, yeah, yep. All right. Way ahead of you. Got it. And he was like, oh, good. Okay. Okay. Good. How about Liberace on ice? <laughs> good, good talk. Dad is also a recurring Vegas vacation. Yeah. Or good, mm-hmm. good talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, good talk, Russ. Yeah. He said, uh, Russ says that in every movie or does he say it in? I think one European? of them, he either says good talk, Russ, or. Russ says good talk dad and I think almost every one. We have not been keeping track of anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I know well, we know um Galecki says it, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure in the first movie before yeah. he wanders off into the desert. Yes, they definitely have that moment. That's yeah. a father son talk moment. And oh, and I think they mu- they must do it cuz they have the um I feel like they must do it with the other Rusty too, because I feel like he's he got catches a lot of, him like with the prostitute. Yeah, exactly. Or I think yeah. he does has a similar father son talk there. Um, this is I also one of the reasons that I one of my complaints with Christmas Vacation is it got so Chevy Chase and cousin Eddie focused that you didn't get nearly enough of the kids, but also not nearly enough Ellen, who I think is the secret MVP of most of these movies. Yes, and we get a really good Ellen plot in this one. Ellen's so good in this one. Yes. Um, she didn't have enough to do in Christmas Vacation. Yeah, nothing to do. And this one, you get her, first of all, Beverly D'Angelo, gorgeous as always, super talented, and you get to hear her do some real singing, like legit singing in this, and um, just her reactions. She's like got the fancy Wayne Newton dress that he sends her here, and then later the Waniac outfit. This it's dress just is so, this, this dress is great. Yeah, it's great. And she thinks Clark sent it to her and he doesn't do anything to correct that. 
<laughs> Wayne Newton's microphone is solid gold. <laughs> uh, I mean, just everything about Wayne Newton is so perfect. It's just so perfect. His tiny so head, funny. his massive body. <laughs> yeah, his giant hair. <laughs> his, his weird his weird little like nasal voice. <laughs> kind of yes. a little high-pitched and nasally. He's come a long way since License to Kill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is, I mean, honestly, how many movies has he been in? Is it just the two of them? Because if, it's, if he's two for two, he yeah. might have the finest cinema career of any actor in history. Uh, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. At least I in mean, the license to watch rank. Because I mean, that's, Newton, that's a pretty good, you know, uh, what was his name? Reverend Joe Butcher. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, good call back. Reverend Joe Butcher in License to Kill and, and himself in Vegas Vacation is the best, uh, you know, that's, that's a pretty respectable. Who's in Mars Attacks? That's Tom Jones, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Man, it if only they could make a movie with Tom, Tom Jones and Wayne Newton. You know what? He probably was unavailable because those movies were made at like the exact same yeah. time. True. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Mars Attacks. That's a fucking great uh, Patreon movie we should do. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. I just remember, because I'm such a huge Tim Burton fan, or was up to that point, and I remember being so disillusioned by that movie. I mean, like, wow. Mars Attacks is I, so good, though. I, I, I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. I didn't get the humor. I didn't get, like, I mean, I probably should rewatch it because I don't think I ever saw it again. But it was it was still much better than, like, his, like the Alice in Wonderland and Charlie and Chocolate Factory stuff, which I didn't Yeah, if didn't you were anything like my experience, uh, I saw Independence Day earlier that year, like mm-hmm. over that summer. And then I think at the screening for Independence Day, the first trailer for Mars Attacks came out. Mm. And I remember thinking, like, oh, my God, this is the year of, like, alien invasion movies. There's also another great movie that came out that same year uh, called The Arrival Mm -hmm. with Charlie Sheen. Do you guys know that movie? Yep. It's awful. But I loved it at the time. I've never seen that. But anyway, I was psyched for Mars Attacks and then finally got to see it. It came out in, like, December, I think. And... uh, it is not Independence Day. I definitely had a moment in Mars Attacks where I was like, I don't get it. But then yeah, I like, yeah. by the end of it, I was like, oh, I get it. It was like a campy <laughs> Independence Day spoof, yeah. which I thought, you know, I, I should have liked because I really didn't like Independence Day. I thought Independence Day was kind of all over the place and shitty, but you know. Um, it is. You're right. <laughs> but at the time, yeah, I'm yeah. a little younger than you. I, Independence Day is great. I loved it. Oh, I think yeah. you're probably the perfect age to, to love Independence Day. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, was in middle I think school. if you were like like slightly older and smarter at that point, you would have been like, you probably would have felt like I did about it and been like, oh, yeah, I see what they're doing. Did I ever tell you guys my Independence Day uh, story? I think I might have mentioned I, it on this pod. After I saw Independence Day, I felt welcome to Earth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is a great bit. Um, um <laughs> But uh, Independence Day, I went to see it on opening night. It came out like July 2nd, 1996. Uh, I stood in line forever, and we got in, me and a bunch of friends, and it was a packed theater. I, we think we were like the fourth row from the screen, so you know, you're kind of sitting like this a little bit. Um and it was me and a group of like neighbors who I went with. This is, a, this is I'm sorry. This is the best gag. Has anybody ever told you your bad luck? Those were my mother's dying words. But I try not to take anything somebody says too seriously when they've got their foot caught in a bear trap and they're covered in third degree burns. <laughs> it's that is a great joke. That is a great oh the whole setup with, punchline. That is perfect. With even even if it just stops is like those were my mother's dying yeah, words. Yeah, that would have been great. But but then the bear trap and the third degree burns are are just the icing on the cake sorry matt go on um the, maybe one of the best jokes in the movie though i like later on too and he's like he's like clark you live with us we'll dig you a guest room <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um sorry i'll tell my story quick so i'm there with a bunch of people and uh, i was on the end uh, or i was like the last person in my group so the guy sitting to the right of me was a total stranger he was like an adult or at from my perspective he was an adult he probably was like you know just a couple years old or whatever i was just a kid though and I just remember during the whole movie, even like the quiet parts, like there's a scene where um, the president's wife dies in the hospital and it's like supposed to be a really sad, emotional scene. This guy just kept laughing, but through his nose. So the Ew. whole movie, he was like, <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> like doing that. And I just remember as a kid being so fucking annoyed with this guy. <laughs> like That guy was fuck? high on marijuana. <laughs> he definitely, yeah, yeah like yeah. in hindsight, he was fucked up. <laughs> Maybe he's just trying to smell something. He was like, what's the smell? He was smelling like the dirty little kid next yeah. to him. <laughs> uh, 
I love this gag where he's winning at the blackjack table because the nice dealer is there. Oh, yeah. And, and then immediately uh, she's like, oh, I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. And then she's like, oh, let's set in my shift. And then That's the so guy good. who's the cursed uh, dealer. Yeah, Wallace Shawn, yeah. Is back. It's like, and, get the fuck out of there now. But not only is he back, not only does it it work out poorly for Clark again, he's actually giving everyone, like, when he really takes it out on him, he's, everyone else is getting blackjacks, and Clark is the only one who's not winning at his table. So good. Um, Wallace Shawn also, I believe, is uh, the Grand Magus in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, if I'm not mistaken. I am going to go ahead and take your word for that. <laughs> This woman who just brought the drink it looked familiar to me for a second, but then she didn't. She looked like, um, oh, God, it'll come to me. The actress from, <sighs> it'll come to me. I don't know. Uh, oh, you know who we, uh, we missed talking about? Who was the um, the woman in the, the lobby of the hotel when they first get there? Was she on uh, SNL or oh, on yeah, yeah, yeah. TV? Yep. Um, or both? Or uh, neither? What is, uh, um, what am I, why am I blanking on her name? She was on SNL. Yeah, she's um, good. Jane Hicks. J- no, no, jo- no, no, jo- no, 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 uh, no. It's not J- Victoria Jan Jackson. Hooks it's is not who Jan- I was thinking of, but it's not yeah, Jan Hooks. It's not, Jan um, Hooks. It's, uh, is it, yeah, it's, not Victoria it, Jackson, but the same era, right? Is it? It's Pat. Was it that one? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck, why can't I remember her name? Uh, uh, Wait, Sweeney. She did Julia Sweeney. Julia Pat? Sweeney. Yeah. yeah. Yep, she's Pat. She did the Pat skit. Yes, where you Pat. can't tell yeah. if if Pat is a boy or a girl. Yes. Yeah. Oh man, that was so funny. Yeah. Julie Sweeney. Uh, yeah, she's uh, in Pulp Fiction, too. She was having a good yeah. run in this period of her career. Yeah, she's good. Um, and I think she's you, just literally giving them the actual directions to how to get through the mirage. She, is. she yeah. is. Yeah. Do you think the It's Pat sketch would fly today? No, for no. a million <laughs> different reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, anyways, at this point in the movie, we've gotten to the point where the family has separated and they're going and having their own adventures. And this is where I think this movie like really starts to hum. Because all, it's cross cutting between four plot lines, which are Audrey's is the weakest, but they're all they all have their moments, they all have their gags. I love this uh, Rusty gag though, where he gets a fake ID. The fake ID is a black guy. He gives it to a bartender. The bartender does <laughs> not take it. He goes back out to the guy he bought the fake ID from, and the guy literally just takes a picture of him with a giant fake license around his head. He's like, "You're Nick Papa Giorgio. You're from Yuma. You work in software." <laughs> <laughs> and I, he just runs with it. He the just, fake ID guy is great because he he's holding a signboard and he's obviously a Frank Sinatra impersonator as well. And the way he makes the fake ID is flipping the signboard over and using it as like a plate for the photo of yep. the fake ID. It's brilliant. It's, it's a great guy. Classic. Uh, right out on the street where everyone can see. <laughs> also, Nick Papa Giorgio, the software guy from Yuma, is like a great perfect confluence of random city, really random ass name, yes. and random occupation. And every time they say it, every time he says Yuma or Nick Papa Giorgio or whatever, <laughs> it's hilarious. My favorite my favorite one is where the guy's like, No corrective lenses tonight, Mr. Papa Giorgio. I do not <laughs> I require do not them. Require them. <laughs> <laughs> so so good. good. He says with this like shitting and grin on his face. Because he's read the face. Idea yeah, like exactly. really closely, <laughs> exactly. Been studying. Yeah, uh, I have a lot of problems with the Audrey plotline. The uh, Audrey plotline is really fun though, and I really like the girl who plays the cousin. I was just gonna get to her. Like uh, Vicky is her name. Yeah, right? She she is she is capital A acting all the way. Oh yeah, yeah. But like she's I don't know like uh, uh, yeah like she no, doesn't no subtlety quite, there. Yeah, she's very nineties looking. Yeah. Yeah, and she looks like she's about like eight years older than she's playing, um, and her and her acting is very very broad. She's like just really slamming the punchlines. She reminds but, me almost of like an like a young Amy Poehler when Amy Poehler used mm, to do like crazy redneck. Yeah, or yeah, something, exactly. You know? Yeah, like that's what I kind not of as good, wanted. But yeah. not as definitely not as good. Yeah, yeah. she's like kind of like the B, like the uh, yeah. That's what she's going. Still for. a compliment though. I, what else is she? I, I kind of wanted to look her up, but I well maybe I you didn't should. Get around to um, it. She's definitely not going to be our. Top four. Um, <laughs> Nick Papa Giorgio just won his first car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. It's like a modest little white car, and by the end, he's winning, like, sports he cars wins, and Hummers and shit. He wins six cars. Or is it five cars? Four, four. Four, yeah. One, One for, for each, each of them, them yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's so, I mean, it's such a gag. It's such a funny gag that as, as Clark Griswold is, like, losing his shirt at Blackjack, Nick Papa Giorgio can do no wrong <laughs> and becomes a gambling god and hooks up with Jilly from Philly and the, and the, yeah, the, rest, and the, of, the rest of the guys. They're so good. Yeah. 
Do you know who Jilly from Philly is? Um, he is a uh, Jerry Weintraub, right? Yeah, he's a, the producer uh, famous of this movie. producer of this movie and many others. Yes. Uh, which is incredible because you would think he was some kind of performer because he really nails, but that just must be him, you know? Like, he must just be playing himself in this. That's, totally. that's what he's like when you go to Vegas with him. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. That's how um, he's like all the time, I would imagine. Yeah. But I think, like, the whole thing with, like, him just taking Nick Papa Giorgio under his wing, telling him he's too, too tense. He's too tense. <laughs> How do you feel about massage? <laughs> who's who's going to give me a massage? Me. Who do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, boy. And this conversation, they're, they're, like, the inane, <laughs> so stupid conversation that Ellen has with Wayne Newton. So that's and, how they came up with Donka Shane. It means thank you. In, yeah, German, in German, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. That's true. It's a true story. Uh, uh, he's, uh, <laughs> what he says, uh, you got a, a great woman uh, there. That's why I entered into the sacred bond of marriage with her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So good. Okay, I mean, so um, Vicky was also a character in the hit television show Dharma and Greg. Oh, jeez. That makes a lot of sense. Well, that, this is why we don't recognize her. <laughs> she's good. Um, Has she done anything since or recently? She's done. She was on Quantum Leap. Dharma and Greg. St- <laughs> well, there you go. That's recently. Um, she was in Cafe in, Society in, my life, li- lifetime. in 2016. Uh, yeah. How many of us saw Cafe Society? Is that a Woody um, Allen joint? It is a Woody Allen joint. Yeah. Uh, she was in Dharma and Greg, which also starred... Uh, uh, Jenna Elfman, right? Who is who also, is also in, in Can't Hardly Wait with Can't Ethan Embry. Wait. Full circle. Yep. Back around. But this is what I like about this part of the movie is they're like every time I'm starting to enjoy, like the I, I think the Nick Papa Giorgio stuff is working really well, and then we come back to the Wayne Newton stuff, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is really great too. And the Audrey stuff is like probably the least funny, but but it's still fun. I, I agree with you that it is fun. It's almost like a a reprieve from the constant jokes. As and we she's get the, so cute that it yeah. like gets a pass too. You just like exactly. The, You're like I like watching this actress <laughs> do fun stuff. Yeah. yeah. Much like, oh uh, my God, I am a fan, sir. I am a fan. <laughs> Do you need a bodyguard? Because I die for you. <laughs> um, I do have to say, like, you know, this movie's like pretty, pretty average, I would say. And then I, I watched it. You're mad, man. I, I had like a half hour left and I paused it and came back. And I watched the last half hour and it really kicked in for me. Like, the, I, you'll see, like, when there's a half hour left, that's when, like, the shit really. Like the third act of this movie is is gold. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's once they get past the Hoover Dam part, which there's a lot of. I think there's a lot of good gags leading up to it, but I'll agree that I think it's uneven. And then once you get past the Hoover Dam, that's when they start to separate, and you've got and you're cross cutting between all the plot lines, and then it just like it's it's gaining momentum the whole way to the end. So I think it's like I, I will agree that it's uneven and maybe a slow starter, but I, everything after he takes that picture in that signboard yeah. to become Nick Papa Giorgio. Yeah. Like once the Nick Papa Giorgio, th- you know what I think? I think the Nick Papa Giorgio plot line is so good yeah. that it's like, it carries everything else that like, as long as we're checking in with Nick, pa- Nick Papa Giorgio, there's also enough other stuff going on that it doesn't become tired and you don't right. start think about, you don't start thinking about the downside of it because he's, he's mostly just getting the upside. Yeah. You know, I love yeah that you don't even see a lot of it. Like there's a part where they go to the strip club at the end, yep. and the guy's like, "Ah, oh, your regular table, Mister yeah. Papa Giorgio." <laughs> yeah. It's like, how many times has he been here? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> if you if you didn't stop winning, you wouldn't go to sleep though. You know, <laughs> yeah. Like how much <laughs> cocaine was he doing? We don't see a lot <laughs> yeah. of the Nick Papa Giorgio fun times, and that's what it's all like. It's like the iceberg thing where we only see the tip. It's all implied. Yeah, yeah. it's all implied. It's very good, very smart. And I was amazed because I always think there's much more Nick Papa Giorgio. It really is only like a, a handful of scenes but they all work and then you're interspersing it with fucking wayne newton cousin eddie you know chevy chase beverly d'angelo and like even the fact that the audrey stuff might not be as strong if that's the weak point of that like you know that that you know whatever the rug that you're weaving there it's a pretty good rug i also think clark's storyline is way funnier if you have the opposite thing going on yeah with another character mm-hmm. yeah yeah Because, like, you, like, Clark is, he's, like, going past the point of where everyone knows it's sad at this point. But to, like, to take that over the top and still make it funny, you it it helps it to be juxtaposed with, like, 
oh, well, he could be just, like, winning, and you know that's not real, and that's also funny? Yeah. Well, it's like, what is his character? What is the joke? It's that he thinks he knows everything, but he really doesn't know anything about the world, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. he's really stupid. He thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. All the time. All yeah. the time. And uh, that's the Clark Griswold. That's very consistent from movie to movie. But he also, in the other movies, like, gives the sense that, like, that is the guy, the father that he's trying to be and the husband he's trying to be. Like, the guy, the father and husband who knows everything, but really he doesn't. But he still has hints of, like, okay, well, fuck you. Like, I know I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just trying to be this guy. You know, he still has that, like, sharp-tongued, like, guy underneath, that Chevy Chase underneath, you yeah. know, who really is smart and really does know whatever. But in this movie, they kind of take that part of him away, if you guys know what I mean. You know, like, yeah. he's a little dumber in this. But it, I, I, having said that, I think it kind of works in I mean, I think he, I would argue that I think he's, he's similar in European Vacation. Um, I think that the I think there's definitely a difference in the John Hughes written movies in the characters slightly. Um, I do think he's kind of a a big idiot, oblivious goofball in European Vacation for a lot of that. Um, and in this one, he's I I would argue that he's probably got more emotional intelligence in this one. Eventually, when he finally gets his head out of his ass, but yeah, you're right. He doesn't have that that sharp wit. That in Christmas Vacation, it's probably the smartest version of him, you know? Like, he actually sometimes is the smartest guy in the room and does have good points. Right. There's also, like, his plot lines are always, like, him rediscovering how to, like, be a part of his family, bring his family together and stuff like that. And they really, like, they're, I mean, in this you could argue it's heavy-handed, but in the other ones they kind of, like, forget to tell that story at times because they're going for, like, the silliness and the jokes. Um, so yeah, I think that's, so we just saw Nick Papa Giorgio, like get the comped room. And we also he, saw a great seduction scene with Beverly and D'Angelo trying to get her, uh, oblivious husband's attention. Oh yeah. Bet with good. a player, bet with a bank, not as natural. Bet with a player, bet with a bank, not as natural. Hard six coming up. <laughs> I love that the kids are like hung over basically. Yeah. <laughs> Don't shout daddy. <laughs> 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 Ellen, she, of course. Ellen has a weird trajectory in this. Like, she she wants to. I wish it was like the whole movie, her wanting to be with Wayne Newton, you know. But then she kind of like goes back on it a couple times, right? Where she's like, uh, uh, she definitely wants to be with Wayne Newton, but is conflicted about it. And I think she's like giving us that in the performance. Yeah, she wants to. the The whole the subtext is she wants to fuck Wayne Newton, but she doesn't. She wants Clark to make that impossible for her. And he won't do it. Yeah. He is, he's doing the exact opposite. He's, he's draining his bank account. <laughs> right, draining his bank account and neglecting her. Yeah. And all she wants to do is for him to convince her not to fuck Wayne Newton. And basically the entire movie is just Wayne Newton and Clark convincing her that maybe she should fuck Wayne Newton until she goes to his house, eats an enormous yeah. bowl of pasta, and gets a lock of his hair. They try to make it simultaneous where she realizes she doesn't want to fuck Wayne Newton right when Clark right. realizes he yeah. has to right. stop her Right from when he crashes a tour bus yeah. through Wayne Newton's front <laughs> yeah. door. Um, <laughs> Which also, how did he know where Wayne Newton lived? Everyone yeah. knows where uh, Wayne yeah, Newton lives. Very common knowledge in Vegas. <laughs> Um, should we do a little top four? Yeah, you know, yeah, I was thinking, four. who could we possibly do? Wallace we do Wallace Shawn. Okay, yeah, he's a good one. All right, I'll run it. Okay. <clears throat> um, do we do Ethan Embry and Can't Hardly Wait? We must have, right? I think we yes. did, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> While they're getting the massage, he has the gold bracelet on with a cigar in his hand. Mm-hmm. Great. It is great. Mm, okay, this is interesting. I think this will be fun. Okay, I will let Colin go first since I think I probably have more guesses. Uh, I'm going to say The Princess Bride. That's a good guess. That is a good guess because you would be correct. Correct. I'm going to say My Dinner with Andre. Uh, You can have a dinner with Destiny because you are right. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's no... Oh, wait. I would like to guess. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Eunice, you're back. I would guess Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Oh, that's a terrible guess. That's a terrible guess. (laughs) Wrong. Eunice, you idiot. (laughs) Wrong again. Damn. Uh, Must be your vagina. It's making it hard for you to guess properly. It's my (laughs) vagina. Everyone knows that women are worse at top four. Oh, boy. Um, that's not true, Eunice. 
<laughs> Don't say that about That's yourself. a bold statement, Eunice. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and guess this movie. Oh, that's a great guess, but a wrong answer. Damn it. Wrong. Shit. I guess this movie just because I knew that if that this was probably the only other one that Colin Yeah, knew. I was going to guess this. <laughs> I should I should have used the guess. I mean, I sh- uh <laughs> I mean, Eunice Morris is where he's definitely a real person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, did I guess out of order because Eunice guessed? I'm, I'm confused. I yeah, I think so. Yeah, you took my guess. <laughs> well, here, you can be wrong okay, in this yeah, one. I'll guess, my, I'll guess something else. Uh, What else is he in? All right, Vegas Vacation. Uh, okay. Wrong. Didn't you, didn't yes, you just guess he, Yes, he's Whatever. just taking the wrong guess that he wrong. would have guessed had yeah. I not jumped in. Jeez. I will guess Clueless. Ah, great guess, but that is... Wrong. Now we're in the hint round. Yeah, okay. So, first hint is that the two remaining films are animated. Ooh. Oh, oh, I hate that. Fuck. That's... Okay, well... I don't know if you know this, Matt, not but there's obscure. a lot of animated films. They're not okay. obscure. I will guess Wally. <laughs> Eunice. Wrong. That's wrong. All right, Colin, I think it's I love you. robots. <laughs> <laughs> Colin... Uh, guess another animated movie how about is maybe i should go like from the 90s era let's do tarzan wrong all right i'm going to guess toy story that is correct he is the t-rex i think right yes, oh yes. he's the t-rex and it even looks a little like him okay Eunice, you gotta guess oh are we getting another clue yeah uh the other clue is that this is also a pixar movie it's another Toy Story movie. No, it's not another Toy Story. Damn it. Oh, wait. I guess. I mean, uh, Eunice, it's Eunice, your Come guess. on. Pay yeah. attention. Damn it. It must be Ants. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even a Pixar movie. <laughs> what a terrible guess. Wrong. Eunice, Eunice, Eunice is so t- Ants is not a Eunice. Eunice. Oh, no, your vagina is clouding your mind. <laughs> oh, no. I always thought. I always thought Ants was Pixar. Uh, I always get that wrong. Everyone always asks me. (laughs) And I always say Ants because I love Ants. Oh, Eunice. All right. Colin, do you have have a a Pixar-related guess? Uh, (laughs) uh, Yeah, what are Pixar movies? Um, Oh, Up? That's a good guess. That is a Pixar movie, but that is wrong. Wrong. All right. Um, I am going to guess, jeez, I feel like, I, I guess I guess I'm going to go with in and out No, in, not in and out What is the one? Inside, inside out. out. Yeah, in and out is out. a burger place. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> in and out is also a movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, with uh, Kevin Ke- Klein. Kevin Klein, yeah. Mm. yeah. That probably wouldn't, that probably hasn't aged well. That definitely hasn't aged well. Uh, we should watch that for the page. Yeah. Uh, we're going to watch a Patreon Kevin movies. Klein movie, but not Wild Wild West. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we should watch. We should watch Wild Wild West at some uh, point too. We have a strict no mechanical spider rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of the John Peters rule. <laughs> yeah. Um, whatever you said was wrong. Wrong. Okay. Um, Eunice, I'm going to tone down my misogyny. <laughs> embrace your femininity. And uh, can we get another hint for Eunice here? Okay. I feel like she needs a win. The guest needs needs one point okay. on the board. Okay, here. this Pixar movie. Yeah, it's movie, almost like someone was making her lose before. Yeah. This animated Pixar movie has a sequel. There's not that many besides Toy Story. Um, Eunice, I I think that you can if you if you're really driven, you might be able to get Cause! Oh my god. <laughs> this is wrong. That was an incredibly bad guess. Okay. Is Cars DreamWorks? It does have a sequel. <laughs> yes. It is Pixar. It does oh. have a sequel. It was an incredibly bad guess. I like Lightning McQueen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Col- Colin, y- you want to you wanna get this? Are you paying attention? Uh, Colin, let's see if you can he's make... Given, he's given oh. you the answer twice now. <laughs> In- oh, The Incredibles. There you yes. go. Yeah. There you go. All right. Very good. All right. Is that it for you top said four? driven? I was like, oh no, no. I was cars. trying to get you to do cars. It's yeah. the first one I thought of that had a se- the first Pixar movie yeah. that had a sequel. Not just one sequel, by the way. I mean, I mean that's what that's what Eunice must have. been. I mean, that's what Eunice <laughs> must have been thinking. Man, Eunice is incredibly I, dumb. I also, <laughs> I you know, Eunice, your accent is lovely. I love the way you say cars. <laughs> yeah, dro- <laughs> dropping that R. Cars. All right. Well, that was an exhausting round of top four. 
Um, <laughs> just out of curiosity, you guys talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to look up the writer of this movie and see what else she's done. Okay, we're not going to do her top four, though. Have we done a Chevy Chase top four? Have we been saving it forever and then never did it? Or That's a great question. Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't I'll look think that we up. did. Okay, well, look, you look a lot of stuff of up, and I will talk about how I love Rusty's outfit. <laughs> Every, all the outfits in yeah. this scene. Oh my are god! Just all the outfits are perfect. dynamite. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely. Outfits. Audrey's got a stripper outfit. Ellen's in the Waniac outfit, uh, and like he's wearing quintessential like '90s dad like '90s dad clothes. gear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the the Docker shorts. Yeah, hitched up to his I belly button. Don't think we've done Chevy Chase, guys. All right. I think let's do it. Well, um, I will go first and take the opportunity to shame you by guessing a movie that Matt has. Never seen a movie Matt has never seen. I'm going to guess Fletch. Wow. Never seen Fletch. He's never seen Fletch. He's never seen Chevy Chase's best movie. That means you've never seen Fletch Lives. That's right. (laughs) Chevy Chase's second best movie. (laughs) (laughs) Well, both of those are wrong. Wrong. Yep. That's figures for top four. You know how many costume changes he has in Fletch? It's a lot couple yeah isn't that like Definitely a couple you want and they shot it all live so it was tough the to trailer for the new fletch movie it. came out today colin did you see it no is that for, are you messing with me it's not chevy chase oh it's john ham john ham taking over the uh, guys at john work had ham. very questionable mixed reviews and john slattery playing his boss in this yeah what again, the hell which no, I'm, I'm 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 all about it that was my favorite part of the trailer i think that every movie they're in they should just play co-workers from now on it should be like a writer in both their contracts what is that is that guy also from mad men or yeah yeah he played his boss on mad men okay yep. um <laughs> like how he's turned out his pockets and those those the, the height of his socks with those shoes yeah so um Oh, and this is a great, great scene at the the all you can eat buffet where they basically just hey, it's all you can eat, Clark. We only need one plate. <laughs> this is where I came back. This is the last half hour of the yeah, movie. Yeah, from it's here beautiful. it's like really good. This it, whole buffet thing is disgusting. Uh, it's great. They, they've got like the blue stuff and the, the yellow stuff, and he's like <laughs> he points out that that should be the chicken or that should be the beef, and the guy just swaps the tags. <laughs> yes. and he's like, uh, "Give me some of the yellow, and don't get cheap on me." <laughs> the jello is like too hard. <laughs> I like it's how the j- it looked like the same Jello mold from uh, from Christmas Vacation. Yep. It's got like little pieces of shit. This is something just stuffing like, stuff in a burlap sack. <laughs> this is something I think like Vegas isn't like quite as famous for. Like they're still famous for like the good buffets, but like it used to be that Vegas was famous for having the good buffets, but also like every place in Vegas had a buffet. Yep. So they weren't all good. You can still find good buffets, but chances are whatever yeah. hotel you're staying at isn't one of them. Yeah, well, there's like a bug or something in that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> so nasty. Um but now I feel like I feel like now like Vegas in 2022 has shifted more towards like there's a few really good buffets and then the other places don't try to have buffets. Mm-hmm. Um Colin, you got a Chevy Chase guess? Oh, of course. Uh I'll guess vacation. National Lampoon's Vacation. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. yeah. Very good. Okay, are we excluding Lu- Eunice from this one because she sucks? <laughs> she's so mean to I her. I know, I know. And it's and it's funny because she's right here yeah, staring at me. But you know, she's so dumb that she's just sort of vacantly oh staring off into space, totally oblivious. Harris, I think you're kind of mean. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't Eunice, you put be your top nice back to on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um all right i am going to get there were no tv shows in this right uh no all right um was fletch correct i forgot it no was fletch was wrong oh, fuck that uh i am going to guess I, this is wrong but i'm gonna guess the three amigos because it's awesome his that second best movie is correct yes nice oh finally top four gets one right uh we're skipping Eunice. It's okay with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Caddyshack. That is correct. Good guess. Hell good yeah. guess. So we're Got at three one left. Four now. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to guess. I guess we're technically at the hint round. I'm going to I'm gonna guess Christmas Vacation. Wow. Forgoing the hint. That is not correct. Wrong. Oh. All right. So hint round now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love okay. Cousin Eddie's reaction to him telling him he ju- he's lost $22,000 where he just kind of like, you know, chokes and <laughs> like he's like yells so loud people at the other tables look at him. 
<laughs> like his exclamation is hilarious. Okay. This uh, there's a lot of hints I can give that'll just give it away. Why don't you go for it? It's my turn. <laughs> this movie uh is directed by John Landis. Is it uh what's it called? Like nothing but trouble or whatever? Oh, it's a good guess. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Is that Landis wrong? Did I even get that right? No, I think that's Dan Aykroyd directed oh, yeah. that movie. Wow. A John Landis Chevy Chase movie. Mm. You know, I I've never met John Landis, but I'd like to be on a plane with him. Why is that? Well, if we get in trouble, I think he can land us. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you for playing along, Matt. That wouldn't have worked if you hadn't jumped in there. I, I, I honestly thought I neither of you would respond, and I would never say anything about it ever again. <laughs> I do what I can to keep this show going, but Colin does everything he can to just dead stop it. <laughs> just stop what are you show. talking about? I got us a guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's correct. I would never come if Colin hadn't asked me. Uh, Eunice, you don't have to put your top back on, but please just keep the bottoms on, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, sake. God. This is it all is. I know is being a hot, hot woman because I'm very hot. It is it is warm in this garage, so it I sure do is. sympathize. Let's, let's um, pick up the pace. John Landis movies. Okay, uh, I, I don't know. I can't think of a single John Landis Chevy Chase collab. Oh, also, I think when I move because this chair is leather, there's like little noises. No, I don't hear that at all. You all don't I hear, hear that? Is, yeah, I, I've been, every time I move in my chair, it makes a fart noise. <laughs> so if you've been hearing the fart noises, folks at home, that it's was just been us that was Matt. You actually can't hear me doing this? Now I can hear that. Okay. Please don't do that. Wait, hold up. This is the part I was talking about earlier. This is, to me, the best bit in the entire movie. Oh. <laughs> Going to a casino where it's just like stupid war. games. And what's funny is that war is an actual game at casinos now. <laughs> but, like, pick a number. That's fucking <laughs> great. And I, yeah, pick, pick a, a number, number between and he, 1 and 10. And he guesses and the guy's just like, no. <laughs> yeah. He's like, 4, 7. Um, and then, like, which hand? Which hand is it in? Yeah, Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, yeah. paper, scissors. This is a great one. Oh my god! This whole like montage had me fucking rolling. This and, is, yeah, and there's hysterical. like extra people at the t- there's like these. Pl- it's like a blackjack table with a yeah. bunch of people. Oh, uh, flip a coin and call heads or tails. <laughs> That's great, uh, Clark. What do you say we go back and bury what's left of my money? It's so good. I'm sorry, sir. It's tails. And the guys they hire to do the to play these oh, dealers yeah. are all perfect. They all look like weird little. They're all perfect. Yeah, they just have like great odd looks. Guess which hand. But it's funny because, like, each one of these games can be, you can cheat easily if you get, like, hire the dealer as, like, a sleight of hand magician or something. Yeah. You oh, know? yeah. Not even a good sleight of hand magician. Right. <laughs> this guy's, this per- one's this guy's got the perfect facial expression for pick a number. That's so good. It's always seven. <laughs> <laughs> Cousin Eddie's reaction. Oh, my God. This is um, a great idea. And even with all this added time, I still can't think of a John Landis Chevy Chase movie. It actually made it harder to guess because I already would have guessed a bad Chevy Chase movie at this point. Yeah, just but think having... of like some of his his greats. It's um, uh, from the eighties. I'll give you that. Spies like us. That's really? It. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Spies like us is interesting. It is. It's, it's yeah. It doesn't age, it hasn't aged well? I, I saw it a few years ago, and I was shocked that I used to watch it on HBO all the time. And it it isn't as good as I remember. The it's scene like, where they're the scene where they're taking the test and Chevy Chase is trying to cheat and Dan Aykroyd is trying to not let him cheat is hilarious. That's a great scene. It's kind of like Full Metal Jacket in that like the boot camp part of it is better. Or than Stripes. Stri- stripes. Wait, am I mixing Stripes no, with no. Spies Like Us? Yeah, no, I'm thinking of Stripes. You're right. Are you mixing up Stripes with Full Metal Jacket? No, with, <laughs> with Spies Like Us. Oh, no, but you know, Spies Like Us is the same thing. Like, once they get to Russia, it's not as good. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. I knew but, there was something But Stripes like that. is also very much like the boot camp stuff is the best part of the movie. And then, like, the only difference is for Stripes, the boot camp, camp stuff is like an hour of the movie. And for Full Metal Jacket, that beginning part is only like 25 minutes, 20 minutes. Or what? Something like that. No. Yeah, the boot camp stuff. No, Full Metal Jacket is four hours long. No, so it's it is not. an hour. It's, 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 it's short, but it's, well, it's, it's like two hours, but like yeah. the, that boot camp stuff is less than a half an hour. Vincent D'Onofrio blows his brains out at like the 25 minute mark no or something. No, absolutely. Absolute, well, absolute, I just watched it last week. Oh, it's incredibly fast. 
Well, you, I mean, you guys know I was really disappointed after seeing Full Metal Jacket because I love movies about jackets. <laughs> <laughs> what a like, dumb joke. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. Yep. <laughs> like the jacket, uh, the Adrian Brody. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Nightly oh, uh, what's yeah. The, the Technicolor Dreamcoat? That's a hit. That's a banger. That's a banger. <laughs> it's kind of a jacket. <laughs> a yeah. multicolored banger. Look at the size of the pasta bowls that they're eating. I know. It's so much pasta. I was trying to figure out like what kind of pasta it is. Is it like uh it looks like fettuccine alfredo? All right, maybe it's, I'm a big fan of the white clam sauce. That's what I was thinking. Mm, I I used to like the white, but I, I don't do clams, and I also can't eat garlic, so white sauce is kind of out for me. Mm. But a good fettuccine alfredo is fine as long as I make it myself and don't put any garlic in it. Mm. Why couldn't you make yeah. clam sauce without garlic? I guess you could do a clam sauce it's, without garlic, but I don't like clams. You know, oh. you got to have the. Why the would you right... do clam sauce at all then? I probably wouldn't. You gotta have the Eunice, right. you want to weigh in on this? You have to have the right pasta for the right mood, otherwise you'll clam up. What about bearded clams? It's funny, Eunice, that you just Matt, basically... that's not funny. Don't do an impression of Eunice. <laughs> that's super rude. I think it's funny that Eunice just basically finished this, the thought, the joke that Colin was trying to get in three times yeah. in a row. I, I, you guys share a I, mind. I, You're so alike. I hope you guys, I hope you two crazy kids finally figure it out and start dating. Well, she I feel is, like this is really really hot um, I feel like these guys are kind of made for each other I passed her a little note that said what joke to say <laughs> said do you like me check one <laughs> I checked the box uh, I like how the people get out of the van that he's crashed through Wayne Newton's <laughs> front door start, like, going and this, through. yeah the tour van that he's ab absconded with and all the tourists are just walking through Wayne Newton's yeah aren't house. they touring his house because he's a celebrity <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like taking pictures and shit yep I love how much spaghetti she has yeah. on her the whole scene. <laughs> and see, we haven't seen any Nick Papa Giorgio bits in a really yeah. long time. And yet the movie just keeps, you know, yeah. going without fine without it. Although Plus we get to find the, him where he's the at. The funniest now. Nick Papa Giorgio yeah. bit now is that we haven't seen him in a long time and we know exactly what he's doing. He has been having a great time in his cabana throwing wild parties. <laughs> Have you seen this kid? <laughs> Mr. Yeah, it's Mr. Mr. Papa, Papa Giorgio. Giorgio. <laughs> Uh, and this guy, oh boy, oh boy, uh, and one of my favorite lines of this entire movie is this has two of my favorite lines. One is when he finds uh, uh, Rusty in the hot tub, and uh, she's still got pasta on her. Shoulder. Rusty's in the middle of a story, and he's the punchline of the story is so I says to the guy, "Get your own monkey," and all his like <laughs> sycophantic hangers on just like laugh hysterically at yes. it. Am I right or am I right? Yes. And then the funniest part is when the security guys come in, they ask Clark, "Have you? we're looking for an underage kid named Papa Giorgio. Have you seen him? Uh, he went that way. I think he stole my wallet. <laughs> yeah. So good. So get your own monkey. Oh, now I hear it. He tries to pass off the cigar. <laughs> Eunice. Oh, God, stop farting. <laughs> oh, Eunice. I have gas. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> it's not a problem for you. My thoughts don't smell bad. I've of course you enjoy your people. own brand. <laughs> Think about the rest of us, Eunice. This garage is hot and stuffy enough. Should we start summarizing our uh, final thoughts We should thoughts probably here? start summarizing because I, I don't yeah. think we have a ton left. Yeah. I mean, we do have a lot. We do have a lot left when they're heading to Club Areola. We do have a lot left in that the ending gag with the guy and the, what is it called? Well, I couldn't remember it in my summary. What's the game they play that called? Kino? Kino. That's yeah, Kino. It. You never played Kino? It's like it's I like couldn't remember like the, the name lottery. Kino. I think that's a different. Yeah. I okay. So there's all this build up that she's like this great stripper, and then we get here and we see Vicky, and like look at her weird dance. Like, yeah, what? yeah. She is a terrible <laughs> dancer. It's, it's good. It's funny that way though. <clears throat> I don't get it though. I don't. Get yeah, the I, I'm. I'm with you, Matt. I don't get the Vicky thing. Um, I also don't get. Well, she's not stripping now. Why they she's all have go go dancing? On? This is go go <laughs> dancing. <laughs> yes, I would say that this is. I guess this is the point where it's most obvious that it's not a an R-rated movie, is the old vacation movies would definitely have some titties here. Um, yeah. And it, they'd probably make this gag better because it would probably be something with Aubrey, Audrey about to actually take her clothes off. Right. And they'd come in and save her from her own bad decisions. Yeah, because go-go dancing, you know, is a little bit tame for her to, for him to, like, grab yeah. her and yeah. run her out, you know. And I don't want to shame strippers either. That's a perfectly legitimate profession. And as we've seen from Vicky... Pretty challenging to do well, you know. <laughs> um, a lot of bad dancing out there, but uh, yeah, go go dancing. No shame in that. Uh, I would, I would, uh, I dabbled with go go dancing. You go go myself. for it. Yeah, I've, I've gone gone for it. 
Um, yeah, this is kind of the, this is kind of like the, um, spiritual ending of the movie. They've resolved the big problem, which is they're going to get back together as a family, but they have the other big problem of (laughs) he lost all their money. So they go play the Kino game where, um, Sid Caesar, Sid Caesar shows up. Uh, we should, we should have done a top four of Sid Caesar. Damn. (laughs) Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's a fun little coda to this, which I think that scene runs a little bit long, but it's still funny. I love the carpet in that scene. It is. I know carpet. that's, I, it's, it's a featured carpet. Yeah. It's just, it's just one of those things. Like when you, when you think about carpets, it's his whole death scene when he like dies and then comes back alive and, and dies winks and, and then dies again. It's like, I get that it's a bit, but it's like, it's from another movie. It's like, yeah, it is a little, and then the paramedics come in and it's like, he must've been the loneliest man I ever met. Yeah. <laughs> They're like telling his life story. <laughs> yeah. All he wanted to do was have some simple conversation with, he, with anybody. He probably would have given anything to have a family <laughs> yeah. just like you. I like all of that. <laughs> yeah. It, it kind of, they lean into it so hard. Yeah. I kind of respect it. Yeah. I remember the first time I watched this movie that st- this with the damn scene was like two of like the things that I, I like the least, over the years, I've softened a lot on this. I I think it's just kind of drags out and is a little long for what it is without, this is where the jokes yeah. per minute gets kind of low, but I do think it leans into it so hard that it kind of works for me at this point. This this is one of those, like, take one joke and then just keep <clears throat> taking it farther and farther and farther kind of things, though, yeah. which I, I like. Well, Matt, you you said you have some objections to this movie. I feel like you're going to be the voice of dissent. You want to go first and uh, kind of talk us through your your thought process and why you hate this perfect film so much. I think, I'm pretty sure Matt said he's never watching another movie again because it can't ever measure up to I it. I did right. see the pile of DVDs and Blu-rays out in the driveway that seemed to signify that he's done with every other movie. But uh, I think here. his wife called the cops because he tried to poke out his eyes. <laughs> so he could never watch another film. It's like, I've seen it. I've seen perfection. I can watch no more. What more can I see? Uh, it's too far. No. <laughs> okay, Matt, what is, what is your objection? For me, all right, so for me growing up, I thought the trifecta was vacation, European vacation, and Christmas vacation. Even though I, I don't think I was too fond of European vacation, I, I loved the other two so much that when this movie came out, or I, I remember like seeing the trailers for it, and just from the trailer, I knew this one wasn't going to be as good. I didn't like that it wasn't National Bias Lampoons. Before you even saw it. Yeah, I didn't like it was na- that it wasn't National Lampoons. I didn't like that uh, Chevy Chase looks a little older. I didn't like it. There's so much about it. And I was like, oh, I don't know, but I'll still give this the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to go see it. Went to see it in the theater. And like, yeah, I mean, it's it's got its moments. It's not, I would not call this a bad movie at all. This is, uh, you know, Rotten Tomatoes gave it like a 16% I saw. And like everyone was kind of shitting on this that movie. Seems low. That it was like, uh, you know, the 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 nadir of the of the whole series. Good word. Um, But Ralph Nader. It was the Ralph Nader of the series. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Good idea. I think this movie does have its moments, and and like Harris, I have softened up on it a little bit. Um, But I I in no way think this is the best of the four, or you know, even the second or third. I mean, it's probably the third best. European Vacation is the worst one for me. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't have the same affinity for this that you guys do. Um, upon this second watch that I did, um, I had fun, but ultimately I don't laugh. Like, Christmas Vacation, I've seen it 10,000 times, and I can watch it by myself. You know how, like, when you watch a movie by yourself, you don't really, like, laugh out loud at the same way that you do when you're watching with people around? Like, I I laugh out loud when I watch Christmas Vacation. It just like gets me every time. It just tickles me in the right places. And, and this movie like just didn't just didn't hit me the same way. Um, I, I I will say that the end like the kind of the scenes that we're watching now are are the uh, the highlight, the my favorite parts. Um, having said all that, I guess time has been kind to it, and it does feel like. For, for the longest time, it always felt like there were the three movies and then this, like, Lego sequel, you know, like one that came out years later that didn't really fit with the rest. But I, but time has been kind, and it feels like a foursome to me. Like, these, it feels like a part of it. 
and it doesn't venture too far out of the way, you know, that that like it feels like a completely different Just think in a series. few years you'll be saying that about the Ed, Ed Helms one. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, possible. It's, I mean, I've never seen it, so I don't know. But we'll find uh, out next time. But uh, having said all that, I feel like this is, I can't remember what I gave European Vacation. I think I might have given it a five, but I, I feel like this is better. So I'm going to have to give this six Timothy Dolphins. Okay. Um, Colin, you want to go or should I? A six out of five? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that checks out. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, I'll go. Yeah, you can go. Uh, yeah, this movie, I think, I can't remember. what When does this come? What year is this? 97? 97. So I was a senior in high school. Um, my friends and I were always quoting the vacation movies. We were always quoting all the movies, like all funny movies and stuff. But my friend Nick Lotko, um, who I haven't talked to in years, probably doesn't listen to this podcast. But if he does, shout out to Nick Lotko, uh, you know, uh, keeping it real. But uh, he used to quote vacation and Christmas vacation constantly. Like so many lines from that, lines that didn't even make sense. He would just quote them out of context and we would always laugh. And I'm pretty sure we all saw this in the theater together. And I admit, I think I was a little skeptical going into it. And then we had such a good time. And to me, this, I had the exact opposite reaction. This felt like, this felt like more vacation than even, in a lot of ways, it definitely felt more vacation than European vacation, which I think was everyone's least favorite. And in some ways, it felt more like a vacation movie than Christmas vacation because it actually got them out in the world doing like a, a vacation trip um, and also had a lot more of the whole family. So for me, my gut reaction, my initial reaction to this was that it was like the quintessential sequel to the original vacation movie. Um, it had great jokes per minute a great cast, really satisfying ending. I love this part that we're watching right now when they get back and he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I won these cars and we <laughs> see the cars and the cars almost match up to their outfits even, you know, and then they all hop in and drive home and they do the little swerve on the highway, like the coordinated swerve. Yeah, that freaked and me out. I was like, oh shit. It's so good. I just love it so much. This is, you know, very close to a perfect comedy for me. I, you were talking about watching it alone and laughing out loud for Christmas vacation. I enjoyed Christmas Vacation more than I thought I would because I didn't really remember it that much. But I, this was the one that I was expecting this to be kind of dated. And I laughed out loud constantly throughout this. And honestly, I enjoyed it more than the original Vacation on the rewatch. Wow. Um, I can't remember what I gave the original Vacation. You gave it a an eight. Okay, well, this will be really easy then. I'll oh. give this a nine because wow. I think the only yes. thing, the only thing yes. I, I, I literally it's the Hoover Dam and, and there are like some gags that don't work. Like, like I said, nitpicky stuff, like the opening isn't as good as the opening of the other movies. Um, the beginning is a little hit or miss with the jokes for the first like half hour or 20 minutes or so. But um, this guy was Mr. Heckles in uh, Friends. Oh television. yeah. The preacher who remarries them. Yes. Yep. He's also like the. He's in uh, Billy Madison also. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. He's a good character actor. Um, oh, yeah. you know what else he plays? The guy who's uh, going to play Kramer when Oh, Seinfeld yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Very trying good. to make the pilot yeah, for Seinfeld. He's kind of like kind of a dick. Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, anyways, sorry, sorry. For the but, but once again, great cast, great randos, great cousin Eddie. I, I mean, just they do everything in this movie so well, so right. I love it. I love, I love the, that. I love yeah. the kids whipping rice in their face. Um, yeah, great movie. Nine Timothy Dolphins, love it. Uh, Matt, I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, or, I, or should Eunice go first? <laughs> I love this movie because I like stories about people doing things. And when they all come together in the end, there's a beautiful wedding and many cars are driven. And there's lots of flashing lights and pretty colors. Eunice, Eunice that isn't a, a toilet that you're sitting on. <laughs> <laughs> just making a mess. Mm -hmm. Can't take her anywhere. Colin, you didn't tell us she wasn't housebroken. I'm sorry. Are you telling me? <laughs> You're telling me that Eunice has now defecated. <laughs> gone to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. All all over. You I can't I, smell I, it. Oh, yeah, no, seriously. I, I didn't You're smell it. You're on the other side of the room. It'll get to you. It'll hit you. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, uh, you can get away I, with stuff like that when you look that good, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to have to rescind her, her <laughs> Timothy Dolphin rating and just move on to Colin. Yeah, I guess we can't take her rating. Uh, so I <laughs> I enjoyed this movie uh, a lot. Yeah, when, when you said 1997, like, I feel like um, for right now, like, our age group, like, 1997 has some kind of, like, peak nostalgia factor. And I feel like this is one of the reasons. They were just... They were doing things right. Cranking, it, cranking out the hits. <laughs> yeah, the late 90s movies. were a random... They were very... It was a very distinct time for movies, but it was a good time for movies. Yeah, and like, this is definitely... Um, I don't know. We, 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 we always do franchises on this show, and I think Vacation, up until this point, was not trying to um, establish its identity as a franchise the way that franchises do now. And this movie definitely does that. Like it, it takes all, it tries to glean all the good things from the previous ones and like put that into a cohesive, like message going forward about like, this is, this is one of the vacation movies and this is the like late nineties version of it. Great point. And was it? I felt like I yeah, was a no, no. You're, you're but, spot yeah. on. It is like they hadn't made up their mind what a vacation movie was, and because this does so much like fan service and legacy stuff, yeah, it kind of becomes sort of the quintessential version of and and something about it being 1997 is like why they chose to do that or like how they did it so effectively. I I think uh, I I feel like there's a better way to illustrate that point, but whatever. That's my opinion and disagree if you really want to but you'll be wrong and um yeah i don't know marisol nichols is her name yeah Yeah, marisol nichols she's good good audrey well colin just jumping off what you said real quick what i do like commend this series for is like they're all so different and like even though this one has some callbacks like they all have enough callbacks like within them to other movies of the series you know but like it's never the if this series were made today it would just be all fan service. They, like the Hangover, how the Hangover Two is like the exact same movie as Hangover One. Yeah. Like even this, like they're not trying to replicate the, the the plot line of the first movie or the third movie or whatever. You yep. know, like right. even European Vacation, which you could argue is like, you know, the most like trying to be like its predecessor. You which know? makes sense yeah. for a second movie. That's Die Hard. All like that's that's a typical st- second movie strategy. Yeah, but, but it's still different using enough. Leftover it, material. From yeah, the, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. But it went its own way, you know. And then Christmas Vacation. One of the reasons that I feel like it's one of the, you know where I feel like it's not as strong is that it doesn't stick to some of those things. But actually, that actually they spent Christmas at home, and that's kind of a different ver- You know, yeah, that again, is a vacation. Not afraid you still, to do something like, different. Do that. You're with yeah. your family. Like, and totally. I I commend that movie for being like different enough you know it's like they kind of changed the mold a little bit it's like off the beaten path what you wouldn't expect you know um yeah matt you're changing your timothy dolphin rating to a seven no fuck that all right sorry. go ahead colin give it a nine let's go yeah (laughs) i also want to give this nine timothy dolphin jesus christ it's a a ring that is my right I mean, you are outvoted here <laughs> because Eunice <laughs> doesn't get a vote, so we're yeah. definitely uh, in the minority. I think Eunice is on record as saying Mrs. Doubtfire is her favorite movie for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> she all, she also, I think, said that this was going to be an 11 before she excused herself <laughs> to go wipe her butt on the lawn. <laughs> the <laughs> lawn? <laughs> yeah, what the can't fuck? take her anywhere. <laughs> well... Um, well, there you have it. We didn't, even, we didn't even talk about the soundtrack, really, which is a complete banger of a, like, just hit after oh hit. Oh, my God. Born uh, to be alive. Uh, Born the to Beach be Boys. Alive. What else? Yep. There's a lot of them in there. There's um, a, Holiday, Road Holiday Road again. is in this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Holiday Road. You have to have Holiday Road. You know what? The, the Born to be Alive song reminds me a lot of, uh, I think, my favorite moment from... Um, Beavis and Butthead do America when they play uh, Roller Coaster of Love when they first show up in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one. like uh, it's it's like a cover, right? It's the Red Hot Chili Peppers cover of of uh, no, it's the uh, Ohio Players, I believe, is the artist of the. Mm, I had the Beavis and Butthead soundtrack growing up, and I remember that Red Hot Chili Peppers do have a cover of that song. 
Maybe it was one of those things where on the soundtrack they had yeah. a popular band. It might band play like at a different it. point in the movie or something. I don't remember. Yeah, I know. Possibly. I know that the 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 hallucination scene that's animated uh, in Beavis and Butthead Do America is all Rob Zombie yeah. animation. I know that. Yeah, that's fact. cool. And also I, Bruce Willis is in that movie. Did you guys see that. the new uh, Beavis and Butthead movie that just I came did? Out? I watched it. I yeah. watched it too. What did you think? Okay. Yeah, it wasn't as good. As I didn't hate one. it. You know, but I just love Beavis and Butthead. I always thought yeah. that they were really funny, um, so they could do anything, and I'll be happy. And they, there's a new show out, apparently. I Honestly, like I, I really loved Beavis and Butthead, but I think like more so, Beavis and Butthead is basically responsible for King of the Hill and Daria, mm-hmm. and which I are, really which I think are both really shows, love yeah. those shows a lot. I liked Beavis and Butthead too, but I think th- you're right. Like the evolution of that show was leading to two better shows. Yeah, it's responsible for Office Space too. That movie wouldn't have got made without. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and true. Butthead. Office Space is excellent. Sorry, I, I don't, I don't want to nitpick, but Office Space. There's two characters in Beavis and Butthead that like are basically like like taken from that to make Hank Hill and to make Daria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, but the, yeah, Office Space too. And and, and he's, <laughs> he is funny because Hank Hill is kind of the antagonist of Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, in, in and a way. it's it's mm-hmm. a different character in right. Beavis and Butthead, but it's similar. It's but they use the voice and like the model of like what he looks like. And yeah, everything. and even his sort of vibe, like he's kind yeah. of like the neighborhood family guy who doesn't want you yeah you kids get off my lawn guy um yeah i and i think that my thing is the funniest thing about beavis and butthead was them talking over the music videos like that was always like the stories were good and could be funny sometimes but it was kind of hit or miss them making fun of the music like what was the can't remember what video it was but there was one where beavis is like what is this video about uh, I think the future. Yeah. The future sucks. Change it. I'm <laughs> um, pretty cool, Beavis, but I can't change the future. <laughs> like one of the best jokes in the entire. <laughs> I heard that the new show brings that element back. Yeah. Yep. yeah. That's, that's good. <laughs> no, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's sort of what was great about it. That was the original thing about Beavis and Butthead is like, it was a cartoon about them, but it was also a cartoon that featured them About watching MTV. music yeah. videos because it was on MTV. That means you're still getting to watch the music videos. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So that wraps up our podcast about Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. As uh, the, uh, it's getting darker and hotter in here, <laughs> mainly because of, uh, Eunice's hotness and her farts, her <laughs> yeah. constant yeah. methane farts. Yeah. yeah. Her hotness and her carbon emissions. <laughs> all, all kinds of people are like drawn into here and then immediately <laughs> flee. Uh, yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I loved being on the show. Thank you. <laughs> well, Eunice, do you have anything like uh, any social media or like anything <laughs> you're working on <laughs> that you want to plug? My social media was canceled because I'm too hot. <laughs> wow. Oh, she's, uh, she's, a, she's some kind of woman. <laughs> yeah, fantastic, fantastic lady. Uh, well, we'll be back next time with uh, <laughs> the remake or the, what do we call it? Legacy sequel. Legacy sequel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which none of us have seen, right? I've seen it. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, well, well, I have not. Big It'll game. be right. interesting. It's not. I saw the trailer today. I mean, it looks funny. Yeah, it's, it's got it's, the, it's, it's it's got right. the kid from the Righteous Gemstones. I love that I kid. like him on he's Oh, yeah, he's good. Yeah. There's a few moments, you know. But I like what's her name, Christina Applegate too. She's funny. True, you know. True for me, uh, we'll probably talk about this then. But for me, uh, I feel like we are the Millers. Kind of really uh, captured something that the Vacation one did not, and that's kind of a yeah. They came problem. out around the same time, right? Yeah, they they were really close to the same time, and like there's like a lot of similarities. Mm. But we are the Millers is different. We'll we'll talk about it then. Yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna bring it up. All right, cool. Maybe I'll watch We Are the Millers for some reference. Have you not seen it? I saw it in the theater and completely oh, have yeah. forgotten it. I if I I feel like I saw it. I could swear I saw it, and I could not. I remember the I, I son remember in that movie is really funny too, and he's it's gone that on. guy who's like got all jacked and like they say he, he's, he's hot now. He's going to be in the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Yeah, exactly. He's uh, uh, Adam. Oh, Will Poulter. He's Adam Warlock. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um, Will Poulter, yeah, he was almost uh, uh, Pennywise in the in right. movie. Oh, he, he's got a weird face. He could have done that. Um, but Jennifer Aniston does like a like a, a dance, like a sexy dance. Oh yeah, she's hot. Kind of thing in that one. Mm. What is what is what would Eunice say about you ogling Jennifer Aniston's sexy dance? 
Uh, too bad she left. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> we, I I'll can ask, breathe I'll, again. I'll ask her about it. Yeah, text her. Yeah, I'll text her. <laughs> she's already on her way home <laughs> to her home planet. <laughs> the, we need the, the slide that says Eunice died halfway to her home planet. <laughs> oh, we were she, born. <laughs> born. Born. Do, do, born. Born to, do, born to be do, alive. Born to, to be alive. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and please remember to rate, review, and subscribe if you like listening to us talk about your favorite film franchises. As always, thank you to Chris Morocco for crafting yet another original remix for this series, and please remember to subscribe to our Patreon for just $1 a month over at www.patreon.com slash L2W. That's www.patreon.com slash L2W. Help support the podcast by joining. You get instant access to over 50 bonus shows that feature us covering non-franchise classics and so much more every single month. Again, that website to join is www.patreon.com slash L2W. License to Watch is a part of the Fandom Limb Podcast Network, so please be sure to check out some of their other awesome shows. And be sure to join us again soon for our final installment of the Vacation Films, Vacation 2015.